popular. You have the best seats in the house. Yes. Absolutely. With all the this best. going by. We're leaving now. Wow. All for you. Wow. <laughs> Very good, man. He's amazing. Very hot, like you, everybody. Woo! Oh. Robert, are you learning something? <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. And this is how my Japanese crossover now. Ooh, oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Watching Chris Jericho. Just incredible, man. And, and we got on the ship and we had a blast yesterday. And everybody's been so nice, you know, incredible. So I just want to say, man, uh, this has been an incredible cruise so far. Incredible. Yeah. And God yeah. bless you people out there. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for awesome. Awesome. You know, I know that it's tough times and people aren't really sure what to do or to think or say or what have you. And we're, we're learning more as we go. But you know what? I hope you guys are coming back next year. Is everybody here coming back? Let me see the hands, everyone coming back. Come on. Yeah. I don't know if we're coming back. Chris has to ask us kind of first. But anyway, maybe we'll just come as, as uh, you know, stowaways or something. So, <laughs> Perry doesn't laugh very often, but that got him. <laughs> I want to thank you for bringing that man, Dave Schrader, on this boat. Oh, yeah. Darkness Radio has been my favorite. Like 10 years, right? Yeah! Do, man. yeah. You, guys, you guys banned him too bad, either. <laughs> you banned him wrong! Too bad. Alright. So you come to the Striper Show, you can expect a lot of talking, man. We like to talk. And even Robert does on occasion, but he doesn't have a microphone. Maybe we'll give him one a little later tonight. But who else wants another bob? I got a few more. He's got the whitest teeth, man. That's who, that's who gets it. Look, 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 look at Maybe up there. Maybe. I think, she, I think she's got it up there. That wasn't, that wasn't the right one, but that's okay. I mean, you, you caught it fair and square. Like, wow. You guys, come on, look at it. She just gave it away. Wow. Now, I want to tell you, there was a, there was a check for $10,000 in the middle. All right, you guys. So let's keep the music coming. we got a few more songs for you. Hopefully we have time to do it. And uh, this one's called, from 1985, this is called Surrender. Striper fans, because you're here, correct? Yeah! Woo! And 
and that's why we have Striper here tonight on the Jericho Cruise. So I want to have a conversation with the other biggest Striper fan on the boat, Joey Casada. It was my idea getting them here, by it, the way. Exactly. He's, he's, the, he's the brains. With uh, Michael and Robert Sweet of Striper! I was feeling we should have tonight's show music. Bam, ba, ow, ow. It's gonna be a bam. Mike is here. Hello, everybody. Yes! Yay! Hey, y'all. Thank you for coming. So it's really cool for me, because uh, uh, you guys just finished your set about an hour ago, and it was a great set on the cruise. And what I really loved is the crowd continued to grow and grow and grow during the performance. And that, to me, shows just how great of a band you are, and the fact that people are just raving about Striper on the cruise. <laughs> but I thought it would be interesting to discuss how uh, the two of you started a band, and, and you guys are very humble, and, and Mike's a jokester, and Robert's very humble as well. Um, but I'll say this, and Joey, you can chime in. No joke, the, the biggest Christian metal band of all time is Striper. Yeah! Talk of that, the genre of Christian heavy metal. I know also too. I mean, just a great band across the board. But but your genre of music, you basically created. Because when I was growing up before Striper, Christian bands were like the Res Band, Petra, um, uh, Sweet Comfort, Sweet Comfort, and they looked like my dad. I love Sweet Comfort too. Okay, I'm laughing, but I, did, I listened to Sweet Comfort and I loved them. They were awesome. Anyway. But what I liked about Striper was that the first time I saw you guys, you guys looked cool, like Van Halen, or like, <laughs> they just looked like a great, cool guys that I would hang out with playing this great music. So you really did take this whole genre into a different direction. It became very successful and put it onto the mainstream map. Was that always your goal when you first started uh, uh, as this band? Go ahead, Rob. You, you, you... Okay, I'll tell you well, what, we'll, we'll play tag team wrestling. Right. Right. So you go first, okay. I'll go after you. Uh, you know, we wanted to be the band that uh, was a rock and roll band that was Christians. Uh, when, I, when Mike and I grew up, I didn't know a lot about Christian bands. It wasn't something I really paid attention to. I know there's a lot of great bands out there, but I really wasn't that much into it. But wow was I really into rock and roll bands right mm -hmm. and by the time Michael and Oz and I had decided along with Tim to you know dedicate our lives to the Lord and to try to do this in the way that we do it um, we wanted it to be real we wanted to do what we do and, and we wanted to reach out to people you know who weren't Christians and I I don't know, I saw a lot of Christian bands playing churches and playing for Christian people, which is fine. But that's not what Mike and I wanted to do. We wanted to touch people who didn't know Jesus. We wanted it, you know, to be real. We didn't want to look down on anybody. We didn't want to act like we were better than anybody. We didn't, we're not a holier-than-thou kind of band. But we really do believe in what we're saying. But we had just asked the Lord God, help us do this. And, and help it be real and help it be good. Right, Mikey? Yeah, yeah. I, I just add to that really quickly. I recently, in the past few years, I've said quite a few times, and it's really caused a stir, uh, that we're not a Christian band. And people say, "What? That's yeah. kind of yeah, how dare you?" It's kind of true, you know. But we're Christians in a rock band, in a band, right? And there's a difference. Like I look at Petra as a Christian band. I look at uh, Sweet Comfort. I look at Res Band as Christian bands because they were Christians in a rock band, right? right. And they were brought up in the church right. for the most part. We weren't brought up in the church. We were brought up on the streets of L.A. playing Gazaris, Troubadour, Whiskey, and we became Christians. Mm -hmm. And we just continue doing what we always did. Right. But with a different message. Right. You know, so we're a rock band that's comprised of Christians. We're really not a Christian band. But if people want to call us a Christian band, that's okay. 
But, you know, I view us as just a, a rock yeah, band, that's, rock and roll that's, band that decided to take a different path. And, but, I, and I have to tell you, for me, it was kind of aggravating to walk into, say, Walmart or your local record store and see Striper put in the Christian section because that's not what we wanted to do right. at all. Right. We, we really wanted to, uh, you know, reach the world. We wanted to touch people. We knew that if you're pegged in that oh, here's a Christian band, it's going to lower your uh, ability to reach people. It pigeonholes you. Absolutely. It, 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 and we it didn't does. want it. And it just seemed to happen. And we were trying to kind of fight against it. Yeah. But our, you know, our lyrics are so outspoken, you know, so yeah. out there in your face in a good way. I, I could see how maybe people would think that. But we, like Michael said, we're not really... A Christian band. We're really more Jehovah Witness metal. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a big joke. But I also think, you know, I was a Catholic school boy my whole life. I grew up in the 80s. And, you know, I related to you guys because I went to Catholic school. And, I, you know, I grew up a heavy metal fan in the 80s. And I needed someone to gravitate towards. I remember in my, in my school, we would sing Battle Hymn of the Republic. Wow. And no one else knew the song. I knew it from Soldiers. <laughs> So it was so nice, you know, even though you sing that pigeonholed you, I don't think it did. I think people were Striper fans and maybe they weren't, didn't even realize you were sending a message. I think that That's the good. music and, and the melodies and all that stuff was so great, and the guitar solos and the drums, yeah. that yes, if you were Christian, you related to you, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't pigeonholed you guys into this one little genre. I, I almost saw it as like, is it in the 80s too, and we can talk more about this. To this day, every band needs a hook, a tag, a gimmick, if you will, right? And this is the time frame when a lot of my friends were listening to Venom, Slayer, Possessed, uh, Bathory, who are, who are the satanic metal bands. And I was never into it, I just thought it was kind of hokey and like the, the day of Satan, whatever. So the other side of the coin was when Striper came around, it was singing about the opposite stuff, which I thought was cool. But it was such a big difference if you're in a black metal band who was perceived as being heavy, and if you're in a Striper you know, Christian type band, even though you're just playing great music, right. it was the lyrics that caused a great divide. Right. Did you, and obviously you knew that. Oh yeah, yeah sure. Lyrics, lyrics, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah, and I tell you, it's with a band like uh, Slayer, not just Slayer, but a, a number of other black metal bands. It, what's interesting is Striper. You know, we we read the Bible, we pray, we go to church, we believe in what the Bible says. So, by doing so, so to speak, we practice what we preach. We're not perfect. You know, in, in, Nobody in any, is. any sense of the word, we're not perfect, but we really do our best to represent Christ, represent God, and, and all that God stands for. But it's funny when you when you you hear about Slayer, and you think satanic band, pentagrams of evil, blah blah blah, blah, blah you know. Yeah. And then you know, Tom is a, is going to church every Sunday with his kids. You know, yeah, he's a Catholic, right. which is great. Yeah, yeah. which is great. Cool. But what my point is. So it. it's, it's the polar opposite right. of what they represent themselves as. Striper, on the other hand, you get what you get. Mm -hmm. We we are what we are on stage and off stage. Right. It's not like we're going to the satanic church after we get off stage. Yeah. You, know what I mean? <laughs> you get what you get. And I want to say, you know what's incredible is we've in our past had so many, and I mean hardcore, real, devoted. Satanist come up to us. And I remember Mike and I, I forgot where we were playing in Europe somewhere, and a guy came downstairs to speak with us, and he said, I'm a Satanist, yep. and this is truly what I believe in, and there's power in it, but I want to say you're the biggest white metal band in the world. And I looked at him and I said, brother, because there's power in it, yep. and I want you to connect with that power. And it's so wonderful to watch that happen where people are like, wait, I'm a Satanist, but I've got to go see Striper. Well, there's so many, we've met Satanists over the years many times that are fans. They're big fans. Oh, 
There was a show. Us. There was a show on MTV, MTV back when I moved back to Massachusetts, maybe late '90s. Uh, and I don't know if anyone here remembers the name of the show, but they would basically show uh, three or four videos. And then they would get the reaction from the parents and then from the kids. Okay. Okay. Or from the, on this particular show, they would get the reaction from pastors, rabbis, priests, and then the polar opposite, which was the Church of Satan. And I was watching this at home. And they played Madonna like a prayer. They played another video. Then they played Soldiers in the Command. I'm like, oh my gosh, what the heck? I got my popcorn. And I'm like, oh, I gotta see this. Whoa. And. They asked the pastors, the rabbis, the priests, are you familiar with this band? No, oh my gosh, this is, this is definitely not representing God, and this is not right. You know, they were negative comments, right, about the band. Striper, Soldier Under Command was the video. Then they went to the Satanists, and they said, do you know this band? And in unison, there were five or six of them sitting. They said, Striper, and he said, we're big fans. And the, the, the head of the Church of Satan in New York City was one of them. He said, oh, I love Striper. Uh -huh. He said, the yeah, message, yeah. yeah the he said, I love doesn't... this song. I love this band. They're fantastic. I don't agree with what they sing about, polar opposite opinions, but I love them. It gave me chills. Oh, yeah. That, that's okay. because the music is so strong. The message obviously doesn't get through unless the music can back it up. I remember my friends and I, they would come to me and tell me about the you know, Iron Maiden solos, the harmony solos. I go, yeah, oh yeah, listen to Robert and Oz. I mean, listen to Michael and Oz do their solos. And you know, we would always compare the two. Or Robert and Oz, or Robert and Oz. But you know, there was always that comparison from my group of friends anyway, between like an Iron Maiden or Slayer and Striper. But music wise, it all fit together. Yeah. yeah, You know, at the end of my days, when I go to my grave, if anything's written on my tombstone, uh, you know, not that anything should be written, it should just be a blank tombstone. Um, <laughs> Here lies Michael Sweet. Not on. even that, just blank. <laughs> but if anything is written, I would like it to say that, you know, I, he was real. You know, we, we might not have agreed with everything he said or thought or did, but he was real. And I just want to be a real person because I can't stand hypocrisy. Yeah. Hypocrisy makes me sick. It really right. does. And that's been the whole Woo! message of Striper because we really do mean it. We're flawed. We're not perfect. We're no better than no any point. of you. Point. But we do mean it. And we have connected with the Holy Spirit who helps us do this. So thank you guys for being there for us and helping us. And without you guys, we can't do it. Technically, you're the boss. Okay, so we love you guys so well, just much. Just so you know, too, once again, you guys have influenced more than you know, Joey Casada and myself, and so many people worldwide, thousands and thousands and thousands of millions. We thank you, I thank you, and thanks for being on the cruise and just rocking it today. Thank you so much, guys.